Let's read verse 16 of Galatians 5. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. This verse states the great principle of Christ-like living. Walk by means of the Spirit. The word for walk, this is what is mentioned in the King James Version, walk instead of live by the Spirit. The word for walk or live is peripatio, which means just to walk up and down. This Greek word was used for a school of philosophy in Athens, Greece, in which the founder walked up and down as he taught. The principle for us is walking in the Spirit. If we do, we will not fulfill or satisfy or gratify the cravings of the flesh. Now, this does not mean that we will not be tempted. It does not mean that we will not have cravings and desires that are contrary to God's word. In fact, the intensity for the forbidden desires may increase. We are, however, promised that we will not fulfill these desires when we are under the control and leading of the Holy Spirit. When we, however, choose to quench the Spirit of God, you know, we are making ourselves susceptible to fulfill or satisfy those forbidden desires. Now, you don't have to question your faith, don't question your salvation when you are tempted. And these desires and cravings press you to fulfill them. You don't have to question your faith or your salvation. Remember that during this time, it's important for you to feed your mind with scripture. Call on God, ask for the Holy Spirit's power, and you will experience a victory. The best antidote against the poison of sin is to walk in the Spirit. It's not you alone who are struggling with sin. Even Paul struggled with sin. He said, I do what I should not do, and I don't do what I should have done. You know, he also struggled. And he is writing here, If I live by the Spirit, or if I walk in the Spirit, I will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Yes, the best antidote against the poison of sin is to walk in the Spirit. You may be having those cravings and those desires, those forbidden desires, you know, pushing you or really pressurizing you to fall into sin. Say no. Flee from temptation. Flee from the evil one and walk under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit. Be under His control. Go to places where you would be able to listen into God's word. You will experience victory. In the King James Version, the word lust is used instead of desires. The word lust in our usage today has an evil connotation, which the Greek word does not have. Lust of the flesh refers to the desires of the flesh, many of which are not immoral, but are of the flesh. Music, art, the works of people who do good. You know, there are many things which in themselves are not evil, but they can take place. They can take the place of spiritual things. Some of us can get wrapped up in a hobby, which takes us away from the Word of God. If anything takes you away from that which is spiritual, then it is wrong. Let's read verse 17. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other. A believer has a new nature. This is what our Lord said to Nicodemus when he said, Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. John 3 verse 6. The believer still has that old nature of the flesh. And he won't get rid of it in this life. The idea that we can get rid of that old nature is a tragic mistake. John said in 1 John 1 verse 8, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Listen to this quickly. When we accepted Christ as Lord, the penalty of sin was removed. Now as we walk in the Spirit, the power of sin is being removed. It will not have mastery over us. Finally, on that day, when Christ appears, the very presence of sin would be removed. 
we have victory when we are walking in the Spirit. We are less prone to sin than what we used to be before we accepted Christ. We are able to overcome sin because of Christ's power in us. Finally, on that day, when Christ appears, the very presence of sin would be removed. We have two natures, the old and the new. That is what Paul describes in the last part of Romans. He himself experienced the turmoil of two natures, as I mentioned earlier. And this has also been the experience of many believers. Once again, you are not alone in your struggle. Everyone is facing the same problem. The flesh was against the spirit and the spirit was against the flesh. Therefore, we cannot do the things that we would like to do. The new nature rebels against the old nature. They are contrary. They are at war with each other. Have you experienced this in your own life? There are times when this old nature of mine wants to wander away from the Lord. Have you had this experience? Also, I have a new nature that is prone to worship the Lord. There are times when I am alone and I just cry out to Him, O oh Lord, how wonderful you are. I love you and worship you. That is the expression of my new nature. My old nature never gets around to praising Him or loving Him. Now, every believer has an old and a new nature. Verse 18, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The Holy Spirit of God brings us to a higher plane. Now Paul makes clear what the works of the flesh are. This is an ugly brood of sensual sins, religious sins, social sins and personal sins. I'll be reading the next few verses very slowly and explaining some of these meanings in order for us to understand each of these words a little better. Let's read Galatians 5, 19 to 21. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity. Now what is impurity? Anything which is opposite of purity. Unnatural practices. And debauchery. This would be unbridled lust, excessiveness, outrageousness, shamelessness. Verse 20, image worship or anything or anyone who takes the most of your time, whether it's wealth, fame, fortune, whatever. Then, and witchcraft. Now, what is witchcraft? It's the use of drugs to get a particular response. It's also to cast spells. Then hatred, no kindness or brotherly love. Discord. Hatred is expressed by open acts of lawsuits, contests, and disputes. Jealousy. It's contentious rivalry, lowering others to set up oneself. Insults, fervently supporting a bad cause or supporting a good one with cruel means. Fits of rage. That is fierceness. Though it may be a momentary outburst of anger, remember the injury is done. Some justify the anger by saying, I may flare up in a moment, but I'm quite okay soon after. Well, so is the bomb. It bursts in a flash, but the damage is done. Selfish ambition. Self-seeking by unfair means. A desire to put oneself forward. Dissension. Disunity, factions, it's groupism, separate parties and cliques. Then envy, verse 21. It's resentment, ill will, felt at the sight of another success. I hope you noted that this is a feeling and not a visible act. It's just a feeling, a thought. Then drunkenness. You know, the New Testament has a lot to say about drunkenness. Let me read two verses. Ephesians 5 verse 18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Then Luke 21 verse 34, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. You know, it used to be 
an adult male problem but now it's becoming a normal practice for teens boys and girls and women are not exempt this only shows how our society is falling deeper into the hands of the evil one then it's orgies it used to be a riotous procession of half drunken people who sing and play obscene songs in front of the homes of their male and female friends in honor of Bacchus the god of wine and the other deities in wild abandon it is feasting and drinking parties that go long into the night where there is promiscuity dancing and merry making well doesn't this happen today and the like notice that paul concludes this list of the works of the flesh by and the like which means there are many others he could have mentioned i warn you as i did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of god i hope you were able to get a deeper understanding of some of these meanings of the acts of the flesh and dear friend i'm sure it doesn't take too long for us to find this all around us in our neighborhood in our areas it doesn't stop only on the streets it could be in our homes it could be in our places of worship well dear friend we've got to be so careful we need to walk in the spirit those who live like this that is those who walk according to the flesh indicates continuous action or practice or lifestyle it is they who will not inherit the kingdom of god our lord gave the illustration of the prodigal son who got down in the pig pen but didn't stay there the only ones that live in a pig pen are pigs now if a son gets there he will be very unhappy until he gets out if you can continue to live in sin you are in a dangerous position if you claim to be a follower of the lord and have fallen in sin don't stay there and take pleasure in the mess you are in you being a child of god cannot wallow in the muck of sin you will need to get up and return repent and get to the savior who is always waiting for you with open arms now having listed the works of the flesh paul will list the fruit of the spirit notice the contrast works of the flesh and fruit of the spirit the works of the flesh are what you do the 10 commandments were given to control the flesh but now the christ like life is to produce the fruit of the spirit galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control against such things there is no law The Lord Jesus Christ talked about the fruit of the spirit in John 15. He said that without him we could do nothing. The fruit is what he wants in our lives. He wants fruit, more fruit and much fruit. In his parable of the sower, he spoke of the seed bringing forth 30-fold, 60-fold and 100-fold. You can find this in Matthew chapter 13. He wants us to bear much fruit. Now the Lord Jesus by means of the spirit of God in our lives produces the fruit. He wants to live his life through us. That is the reason I keep saying that you are never asked to live the Christian life. You are asked to let him live through you. No believer can live the Christ-like life himself. The old nature cannot produce the fruit of the spirit. Paul makes it clear in Romans 7:18 that the new nature has no power to produce the fruit of the spirit he said to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good i find not that is the problem with many of us how do you do it this is not a do it yourself operation but how are we going to let the spirit of god produce the fruit of the spirit in our lives john 15:4 says remain in me and i will remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me we are to remain take a stand for christ abide in christ if we are to produce fruit paul is stating the principle of fruit bearing so that we can understand it the fruit is produced by yielding by yielding to the sweet influences that are about us i'm not talking about the world and sin and neither is paul we are to yield to the holy spirit who indwells us 
It's about surrender, giving up ourselves to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to produce fruit. It is called the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. There is no law against them and no law which will produce them. You cannot produce any of these by your own effort. When you are led of the Spirit, when you remain in Christ, you will bear fruit. You will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Garbage in, garbage out. You would have heard this before. When we surrender ourselves to God, to Christ and the Spirit, we will produce fruit. It would be the obvious, natural result. We don't have to work ourselves to achieve or produce fruit. It will happen. We spent quite a deal of time looking at the acts of the sinful nature. And I'm sure you would agree with me that it wouldn't take you too long to find it in all spheres of life. It sure is necessary for us to constantly protect our systems from the deadly virus of sin with God's antivirus program. And how is that done? When we run our lives in and through the power of God's word and his spirit, we will not be able to fulfill the desires of the flesh. Instead, we will bear fruit. Dear friend, go and bear fruit. Live in the spirit of God. Walk in step and you will bear much fruit even as you remain in Christ. God bless.